narrative because I don't want my comments to be construed or changed. Um, so I wanted to ensure the accuracy of that. Um, but most of this conference will be done uh, strictly through um, my narrative provided to you. Okay. Okay, first and foremost, I want to give you an update on the injuries. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we know there is a cover-up taking place in Las Vegas, Nevada, concerning the tragic massacre of October 1st, 2017, that left 59 people dead and hundreds of others wounded. We know that there were multiple shooters from all of our military experts and the acoustic evidence, but also witnesses on the ground who were up to a mile away and witnessed active shooters as well. And now we have the sheriff changing his story and the timeline over and over and over again. And when they do change the timeline, it's to line it up with what hotel witnesses saw what security witnesses saw but then you add to all of that the fact that we have hostage rescue team and fbi sources that told us day one that paddock and his girlfriend were traveling to the middle east and that there was antifa and islamic literature in the hotel room at mandalay where the main shooting reportedly came from the news is lying fbi hrt did the hit on the guy and they found anti information in the room and photos of the woman in the Middle East. So he did not kill himself. The FBI hostage rescue team killed him because he was firing on them. So he did not want to be taken alive. And uh, reportedly he did it. Uh, and it was uh, anti crap everywhere. And we're not denying that most of the shooting came from there. But in the first two and a half minutes, it's coming from multiple positions around downtown Vegas, and you can hear it in congruent, unedited videotapes where taxi cab drivers are sitting in the same spot, and you hear the shots far off in the distance, then you hear shots at Mandalay right above the drivers. And then we've got footage from a mile away, close to where it happened, and you hear the same cadence, two different firearms, one that is a full auto smaller firearm, another that is clearly a light machine gun, belt fed. The experts, including federal law enforcement and former high-level Navy SEALs, have come on this broadcast who testify in federal court on acoustics and have testified that it is completely clear what's going on. Craig Sawyer, a former leader with SEAL Team 6, who hosts major shows on Discovery Channel, has broken it down. But the biggest evidence yet is blaring out in plain view. And that's the sheriff himself, Joe Lombardo. The night it happened, he was cool, collected, and focused. Then a few days later, he gives us the first clues that match up with our sources and the witnesses that there's no way he acted alone. Even though the FBI was saying he had to act alone. And there's no way you know, he could just be doing all this on his own. And that clearly... He probably was radicalized, and they were looking into that. Now the story completely changes. And when we look at the FBI agent who's the chief agent in charge there, he is a Mueller-Comey globalist minion involved, along with Mueller and Comey, suppressing investigations of Islamicists and others. And that's the big issue here. ISIS, even the AP reported, almost always takes credit for things they've done, not things they haven't done. Even if it's someone inspired by them, if they didn't get a communication from them, they won't take the credit. They took credit day one for this and have continued to take credit. But within hours of the tragic event, before the bodies were even cold, the FBI came out and said no Islamic connection, no ISIS connection, and only one shooter. As this event unfolds, we have determined to this point no connection with an international terrorist group. As this investigation continues, we will continue to work with our partners to ensure that this is factually, thoroughly, and absolutely investigated to be able to bring comfort and peace back to this community. Thank you. 
How could they know that before the investigation had even been performed? And finally, the body language of Sheriff Lombardo. There is almost no one on Infowars.com or Newswars.com or on YouTube. We're talking, we're getting 97, 98% votes on these videos. Even our detractors who normally disagree with us are saying, absolutely, there's multiple guns. And that sheriff is acting completely and totally freaked out, running scared, deer in the headlights, stammering, looking down. We've gone back to previous press conferences. He didn't act like this. And you've got that FBI agent that our federal sources have told us is bad news in charge, standing behind him, Rouse, glaring and glaring and glaring. We don't know the full story. And we don't have all the answers. But when we question things and the questions we point out turn out to be valid and our sources give us info that turns out to be accurate and then we still. Let me tell you something right now. If this shit, this story don't pan out, I'm talking about uh, not even panning out like they wanted to, but how it's portrayed. In about another month or so or less than this sheriff's going to be dead, guaranteed 100%. You can just tell how this man is acting towards this guy right here. This man right here is going to have this man right here killed. And that is no bullshit. He is going to kill him for this Vegas story because the sheriff knows the truth. And this motherfucker is there just to make sure the FBI's narrative gets out. Get criticized by MSNBC. It's because they have to admit they don't know what's going on. Here's the headline. Las Vegas Sheriff in emotional press conference admits he's still searching for answers, but tells you everything you've got to know. There's no collusion between us and the FBI. There's no conspiracy theory here. Conspiracy theory? When all the acoustic evidence and the eyewitnesses and the security people, you name it, are telling us the same thing. And now eyewitnesses that weren't even harmed, that are young, that are 29 years old, are dying. Put it like this. Everything that the sheriff is saying in this in this video, just listen to the sheriff at the end of the video. Everything that he's saying is in reverse. This, when he says there is no conspiracy, you say to yourself there is a conspiracy. And just when you say that in reverse... When he says no, you say yes, and everything pans out to what we're saying on the internet. The sheriff is double talking to you. Okay, guys, he's he's leaving a message just in case they fucking kill him. You get that? Okay? You fucking get it? They're leaving him. He's leaving a fucking message just in case they off his ass. The people like us will say, damn, read between the lines, dude. He's telling you that these fucking people are going to kill him. If this story don't pan out right, if ISIS comes up and blows something else up, this sheriff is going to kill himself, or not even. This sheriff is going to kill himself. They're going to say he killed himself over grief and stress over the Las Vegas shooting. 34 years old are suddenly dying of natural causes. And on top of it, we've got the security guard who reported he was shot at down the hallway six minutes before all this happened. He's disappeared. And then we've got witnesses at Mandalay and at other casinos as well, all concurring and lining up with the police scanner audio that there was shooting going on at the Bellagio as well. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the cover-up that is unraveling the power structure. And the reason it's happening is they did this in 2017. And by they did this, ISIS, the evidence showed, carried out the attack. For whatever reason, the government doesn't want you to know what's going on. You've got stay-behind networks inside the FBI, known for blocking uh, real investigations over and over again of other events, trying to block Trump's agenda as well, and trying to work against him in the Justice Department to overthrow the president and the recovery of our republic. So we have a group with a history of cover-ups. We have evidence of a cover-up and we have a sheriff that is acting completely and totally scared and discredited and he's changing a story over and over again ladies and gentlemen infowars.com and our crew and you the listeners our human intelligence on the ground have been proven incredibly accurate yet again asking questions and finding answers 
But we need to stay focused on this case because this could unravel the entire criminal networks of the shadow government that have been pulling off capers like this and covering up capers like this for a long, long time. We know there's a cover up. Now we've got to find out exactly what they're covering up. And the evidence is overwhelming. It's a concerted ISIS attack that for whatever reason they've decided to lie to the public about. And now it's blowing up in their face. I'm Alex Jones. And if you're watching this transmission, you are the resistance. You know, in the early throes of this tragedy, I had advised each and every one of you um, that items of information were going to change. The dynamics of this investigation is, is far reaching. It's wide. And the name as part of the registration had changed on the 28th. Uh, to include Mary Lou Danley. Uh, so that was the confusion associated with that. Uh, no matter what the perception is, whether we were uh, being non-transparent or we were attempting to be subversive, is false. It's important that you continue to listen to me. 959 is important. It wasn't inaccurate when I provided it to you. The circumstances associated with it is inaccurate. Everybody understand that? 959 is important. It wasn't inaccurate when I provided it to you. The circumstances associated with it is inaccurate. Everybody understand that? No question, sir. There is no conspiracy between the FBI, between LVMPD, and the MGM. Nobody. Did you hear the double talk? <clears throat> Did you catch the double talk? The double talk. Remember, reverse that shit. He said there is no conspiracy. Remember, there is a conspiracy with the FBI, with the MGM Grand, and with the sheriff station. He is attempting to hide anything. Reference this investigation. Right there. Right there. That's it right there. He's Stances lying. associated with it is inaccurate. Everybody understand that? No question, sir. That's where you know he he knows his life is at risk. There is no conspiracy between the FBI, between LVMPD and the MGM. Nobody is attempting to hide anything. Reference this investigation. Break it down. Break it down. So at this point... Look it he, wasn't inaccurate when I look when he starts crying and look at his face provided to you the circumstances associated with it is inaccurate everybody understand that no question sir there is no conspiracy between the FBI between look LVMPD and he's the MGM down. Look, check it out. nobody look is attempting to hide anything just reference this investigation watch you break it down there you go you're gonna fucking kill me for this shit you so at this point i want to thank the community i want to thank you for letting me be your sheriff and vegas strong because they're gonna fucking kill me after this and this is one of my last messages to my motherfucking family and i hope my family understand this shit too why would he say that why would he say something like that Conspiracy between the FBI, between LVMPD and the MGM. Nobody is attempting to hide anything. Reference this investigation. So at this point, I want to thank the community. I want to thank you for letting me be your sheriff and Vegas Strong. Find the official story and the agencies that can. Nobody is attempting to hide anything. And there's the rub. As the FBI watches over every word Sheriff Lombardo utters. My attempt, like I stated earlier, is to give you information as I know it, unverified, to calm the public. Not to establish a legal 
case. He admits the goal is to calm the public with unverified information. And another key word to pay attention to with the sheriff is calming the minds. He said that like 50 fucking times. Calm the minds. Calm the minds. Uh, you need to calm his mind because they the ones going to get his ass. So, Not to establish a legal case. We could spend the next 10 minutes dissecting that bizarre statement. And with alleged Mandalay Bay hero, maintenance man Campos now missing. Hi. Hi, how's it going? Hi, can we speak to um, Jesus Campos? We have information that he's actually missing and he canceled his interview with Sean Hannity. He said maintenance man, but from what I know, he's supposed to be security guard. Major concern throughout the nation that uh, um, something happened to him. Is he missing or is he here? I have to go. He's not here? We can't talk about stuff right now. Is he missing now? It's getting difficult to even comprehend what the official story even is at this point. And it's clear that Sheriff Lombardo is beginning to crack under the pressure of the FBI's glaring eyes. Security guard Campos was shot at nine, just before 10 o'clock. And the shot is out the window. As, as you described, and there were two... About so let me, let me help you with that, Ken, because you picked up on it. Yes, the timeline associated with the original shot and Mr. Campos has changed through investigation as I have conveyed to you from the very beginning and your zest for information and my zest to ensure the public safety and the calming of their minds is some things are going to change. An official narrative that no longer makes any sense. In this video, we're going to focus on the real cause of this chaos, the shadowy powers behind the official story and the agencies that control these ridiculous narratives. As we pointed out recently, the guy on the right is Aaron C. Rouse, the special agent in charge of Las Vegas. Now, we previously reported that Aaron C. Rouse was married to John Podesta's daughter, Megan Rouse, as was reported by researchers on Vote. The claim is now being made that Megan Rouse is married to this man, Gordon Rouse, who does have a clear hatred for President Donald Trump. If that is the case, we regret the error. But here's what we know for certain about FBI Special Agent Rouse. He was previously the section chief of the counterintelligence division at FBI headquarters. So what does that mean? The counterintelligence division is a division of the National Security Branch of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The division protects the United States against foreign intelligence operations and espionage. It accomplishes its mission by interacting with the local law enforcement and other members of the U.S. intelligence community. Hmm protecting the United States against foreign intelligence operations and espionage. Spies. That's what they're supposed to stop, right? Like the Mossad? You may recall Carl Cameron's four-part series on Fox News in the days following 9-11, which revealed Israeli art students, some of which were Mossad agents serving in areas of military intelligence, electronic surveillance intercept, and or explosive ordnance units, and they were meddling in American affairs. Since September 11th, more than 60 Israelis have been arrested or detained, either under the new Patriot anti-terrorism law or for immigration violations. A handful of active Israeli military were among those detained, according to investigators, who say some of the detainees also failed polygraph questions when asked about alleged surveillance activities against and in the United States. The FBI's counterintelligence division did little to bring those Israeli spies to justice. In fact, Michael Chertoff sent several of those Mossad agents back to Israel, where they went on a talk show and said this about their presence in New York City on 9-11. Our purpose was to document the event. And despite the FBI's counterintelligence division doing little to bring any of those Israeli spies to justice, in the wake of the 9-11 attacks, the division's funding and manpower were significantly increased. Which brings us full circle, because it's now very clear that whenever Sheriff Lombardo speaks, he has a very watchful eye peering over his shoulder, ensuring that he stays on script, or at least trying to prevent him from revealing too much truth. But regardless of how sketchy Stephen Paddock is, the police are also hiding something here. Lombardo is being told by the agent behind him, don't go there when asked about Stephen Paddock's car. Don't go there. Don't go there. I'm sorry? Was the car planned for him to stay? So there might have been evidence of... Don't ask me to make assumptions. So when you hear the phrases deep state or shadow government, 
you really need to remember what happened on 9-11 and how those Israeli Mossad agents were sent back to Israel and not brought to justice. Documents say they, quote, targeted and penetrated military bases, the DEA, FBI, and dozens of other government facilities, and even secret offices and unlisted private homes of law enforcement and intelligence personnel. The majority of those questioned, quote, stated they served in military intelligence, electronic surveillance intercept, and or explosive ordnance units. And remember, that entire expose by Carl Cameron was completely ignored by the rest of the mainstream media. Given the deep state and shadow powers that are clearly in play at shaping the official story of what happened in Las Vegas. And a couple of these items I will read from the narrative because I don't want my comments to be construed or changed. Um, so I wanted to ensure the accuracy of that. Um, but most of this conference will be done uh, strictly through um, 